Hello, I want to talk to you today about using metaphors in academic writing. When I began work on the script for this video, my mind was a desert. I was lost and I could not find the path to the words that I wanted to use. I needed to escape despair to summon my writing mojo and get this script nailed to the screen. OK, let's back up a moment. How many metaphors do you think I have used so far in this video? In less than 30 seconds, you can stop and rewind, watch it again if you like, and see how many you can count. But I can tell you now, I have used seven metaphors. I said my mind was a desert, I was lost, I couldn't find a path, I needed to escape despair, summon a mojo, nail a script to a screen, and then we should back up. All of those are metaphors. This level of metaphor use is so common in speech that we don't really notice. In writing, it would seem overdone. But used sparingly, metaphors can add depth and meaning to writing. They can help us to make a point, to evoke a memory or an emotion for the reader, or to create a visual image in the reader's mind. And all these kind of things help people to understand more fully and remember better what it is that they're reading. Metaphors can also be used to support our positions as writers. They can link with your methodological position. For example, if you're a constructionist, constructivist, social constructionist, whatever you call it, you might use metaphors like firm foundations, ladders to climb, bricks to build houses of understanding. If you were, by contrast, an interpretivist, you might use metaphors like conduits or channels, arrangers or conductors, metaphors that translators and interpreters might use. You have probably heard of a mixed metaphor, which is not, generally speaking, a good thing unless you're aiming for comic effect. But using a coherent set of metaphors consistently, though still sparingly, can really strengthen your writing. Also, using metaphors can be fun. Don't just take my word for it, why don't you have a go?